Well, brothers and sisters, we come to our second week in Romans chapter 13, and uh, let's start in humility and with a spirit of wisdom by praying. Father, in Jesus' name, would you give us the ears to hear, and would you grant us hearts to receive everything you have for each one of us individually and for your church today, in Jesus' name, amen. So let's begin with Romans chapter 13, verse 5, Romans 13 and verse 5. So it is necessary to be in subjection, not only because of wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. In other words, we obey governing authorities, not only to avoid getting in trouble, but because it is the Christian and moral thing to do. Consider the church in China. It does not promote democracy, and we Americans love our democracy. But the church in China simply preaches the gospel. The government still does not like or trust churches. However, they cannot claim that the churches in their land are controlled by America or by other anti-communist interests or influences. The church in China is influenced by the Holy Spirit and they are driven by the word of God and they focus, they have a laser focus on promoting Jesus Christ, his resurrection, his salvation, and his healing. And the church does well for that. Verse 6, Romans 13, verse 6. For this reason, you also pay taxes, for they are God's servants devoting themselves to this very thing. Look, paying thousands of dollars a year in property taxes for schools that seem to oppose Christian beliefs can be frustrating. Paying thousands when buying a newer car to a state government that seems overbearing and opposed to the churches can be very frustrating. Nevertheless, our job as Christians is to pay those taxes. Thankfully, we live in a democracy where part of our Christian practice also includes being salt and light by lobbying for Christian values. Verse 7, Romans 13, verse 7. Render to all what is due them. Taxes to whom taxes are due. Respect to whom respect is due. Fear to whom fear is due. And honor to whom honor is due. Again, We pray for our leaders. We may oppose policies and even particular leaders. We might vote against them. However, we show proper respect. We do not engage in crass political humor that dehumanizes. We still have our say. We still have our vote. And we do well and do right to Engage in that process. But when all is said and done and and the new leaders are elected in or the old leaders are returned, we give honor to whom honor is due, respect to whom respect is due, and we pray for all governing authorities. And I'll say it one more time. If I don't like who's in power, if I don't trust them, I pray twice as hard. Because when God blesses them, and when they do well by the country by making wise decisions, then life for all of us, including us Christians, improves. And so take part in the democratic process. Uh, Use the wisdom that God has granted you. But pray for all of those in authority. Verse 8, Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Our subheading this time is brotherly love. And I love this verse. Romans 8 says, Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another 
has fulfilled the law. So we had a beautiful experience at the Christian school I work at recently. One of our students was struggling, and, and for privacy's sake, I won't go into the details of what was involved. But ultimately, that student came to school for support. And when the student was asked, well, why, why, why did you look to the school? The response was, this school feels safe. I feel loved and supported here. And by the way, yes, we hear respondents who visit our church say the same thing. They can tell that we here at this church, Angle Lake Neighborhood Church, love each other. And we do welcome our visitors. And I, I see the pastor. He's very masterful at making sure to touch base with new people in the church to get to know their names and to just even for uh, a few seconds to visit with them and, and to let them know they're loved and cared for. We don't try to impose, but we definitely want to be open and loving. And this is what God calls us to. Of course, we consider Jesus' assessment of what the second most commandment is. This is what he said in Matthew chapter 22, verse 39. Again, Matthew 22, verse 39. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Indeed, in 1 John 4, 7, and 8, we are told, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love God does not know God, for God is love. Uh, some of you might have learned that as the song, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another, 1 John 4, 7 and 8. And so, let us excel in love. Of course, since God is love, the key to our being love is to be filled with God's love. Love. There it is, brothers and sisters. Who would have known you'd hear this in a Pentecostal church? Be filled with the Holy Spirit and you will walk in God's love. Verse 9, Romans chapter 13 and verse 9. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, you shall not covet, and if there are any other commandments are summed up in this saying, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. We know this, but we may not realize just how expansive and powerful that statement is. The law of Moses includes 613 basic commandments. You know, sometimes I'll ask my students, do you know how many commandments there are in the Old Testament? And they'll pop their hands up and they'll say, 10, 10, 10. And I say, those are the chapter headings. <laughs> those are the categories. But under those, there are a total of 613 basic commandments. There's a school on Mercer Island called Yeshiva High School. And I'm told, I don't know if it's still true today, but they used to call themselves the 613s because they are Orthodox Jews and they obey the 613 laws of Moses. You might argue that since you're not Jewish, you're not bound by the Mosaic law. The Orthodox Jews argue that all of humanity are subject to seven laws, and they call them the Noahide laws. And so I just share this with you. I'll try to be pretty quick about it. But this comes from the Jewish website, Habad.org. 
and it lets you know what Jews believe that all of us should be doing, how we should be living. And this is what it says. First, do not profane God's oneness in any way. Acknowledge that there is a single God who cares about what we are doing and desires that we take care of his world. Second, do not curse your creator. No matter how angry you may be, do not take it out verbally against your creator. Third, do not murder. The value of human life cannot be measured. To destroy a single human life is to destroy the entire world. Because for that person, the world has ceased to exist. It follows that by sustaining a single human life, you are sustaining the entire universe. The next command, do not eat a limb of a still living animal. Respect the life of all God's creatures. As intelligent beings, we have a duty not to cause undue pain to other creatures. The next command, do not steal. Whatever benefits you receive in this world, make sure that none of them are at the unfair expense of someone else. And the next command is harness and channel the human libido. Okay, Incest, adultery, rape, and homosexual relations are forbidden. The family unit is the foundation of human society. Sexuality is the fountain of life, and so nothing is more holy than the sexual act. So too, when abused, nothing can be more debasing and destructive to the human being. And then, establish courts of law and ensure justice in our world. With every small act of justice, we are restoring harmony in our world, synchronizing it with supernal order. That is why we must keep the laws established by our government for the country's stability and harmony. These are far fewer than the Mosaic law. Still, what a set to try to follow. Paul says that if we would simply love, we fulfill all of them. And it begins with loving our brothers and sisters in Christ. Some might think it more noble to love strangers and non-Christians, but our Apostle Paul says, no, it's not that we should not extend love at all. Rather, our love begins within the household of faith. Hey, we're going to spend eternity with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We do well to love them now. Also, when the world sees us interact with one another, they need to see our love. Otherwise, they have no hope. And verse 10, Romans chapter 13, verse 10. Love works no evil to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. How ironic. Even the nature-based Wiccan religion, the worshipers of creation who love to be called witches, even they have as the creed, do no harm. Similarly, doctors are said to follow the creed, first, do no harm. This is a minimal standard. We certainly must bring no harm to people, of course, even this is a high calling. For if Jesus is right, that seeking his kingdom is first, then everything we do should drive people towards his kingdom. Likewise, nothing we do should drive people away from God's kingdom. And so what have we said today? Week one gave us the charge to obey and pray for our government leaders. This week, we were reminded of our most basic charge to love, especially our brothers and sisters in the Lord. When we do, we obey all the Old Testament law. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, there is no way that most of us, certainly not I, could remember 613 commandments. 
and to understand that those are just the basic commandments of the Old Testament. Even the seven laws of Noah are a bit of a challenge to learn and remember. But God, we can remember Jesus' two most basic commandments. To love you and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And so our prayer, O oh God, is that you will fill us afresh and anew this day, this hour, this very moment with the Holy Spirit so that we can extend love to our families, our household, and God extend it out to our communities, our schools, and our workplaces. Help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.